Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we are having a look at an advanced save system for Gaming Studio 2. Now, the aim of this tutorial will be to have a look at data-driven approaches, where, which is where we define data in order to reduce the amount of actual programming we have to do. We're also going to be looking at uh, GameMaker Studio's JSON support, as well as how we can use reflection to get variable data from our objects. All right, so the starter project we're going to start with is quite a simple demonstration where you have these red circles you can move around and change the color of by simply clicking them. And we also have these two squares over here which you can uh, change the text of by uh, typing after clicking on them. So um, you can actually get this, uh, this starting file by uh, going to the link in the uh, description of this video. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that there is a save and the load button. However, right now they don't do anything and this is what we're going to change. So the idea is that whenever you save the whole, um, when you click on the save button, it will save the whole system as it is currently and when you press load it will load the last saved uh, file. Now you could eventually change it such that it asks for a uh, file location so you can have multiple save files and so on. However, uh, for this video we're going to keep it simple. So we're going to close this and we're going to quickly look at the two objects we have. So we have a circle object over here and all it essentially has is an X and Y position these two uh, variables here are actually used for the dragging code. Uh, we don't need to save them. Uh, we have this color array, which is an array of colors, which is used to determine what different colors we cycle through. And then we have this color index over here, which is the actual um, index of the color in the array. And this is what we're going to be saving. So we're going to be saving its color index and the X and Y uh, coordinates because we can drag it around. We also have a square. And this one really only has uh, two variables. It has whether it's active or not and the string it's currently displaying. Now for this tutorial, we're just going to be saving the string. You could very easily add whether it's active or not. However, um, I feel like in most games you wouldn't want to do that because it could be a little weird to load the game and then you're already typing inside the box. Uh, though it really depends on what the game you're making is. So we're going to start off by going to this new tab over here, which is um, where our two save and load buttons are. Now I'm not entirely sure whether these tabs will um, port over inside the export, but if they haven't, you can also find the two objects in the resource tree. However, before we start modifying these objects, we have to start creating a couple scripts to help us. So we're going to create a first script, which we're going to make uh, full screen, just so that we have a bit more uh, space to work with. And we're going to name it uh, save underscore meta. And this script will essentially hold metadata about the saved data. So it will hold essentially what variables we want to save for each object. Now what's important is that uh, this script gets called as the game starts because we want all of our metadata to be there when we start the game. So we're going to call GML pragma with the global command and the argument will be save underscore meta as a script. So for those of you who haven't seen my video on the subject, what this uh, line of code here will do is essentially tell GameMaker that we want this piece of code here to be called globally or as soon as it starts, as soon as the game starts. And this piece of code is just calling the save meta script. So by doing that, whatever we write in the script will get called uh, on, on game load. So now what we can do is create a map which will hold all of our save information. So we can have a uh, global variable and we're just going to call it save for now or maybe save map. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, it will depend on your naming convention and so on. But for this simple tutorial we can keep our names quite simple. And we're just going to do dsmap underscore create like so. Now we can start populating the map. So first of all, we're going to only deal with the circle for now because uh, let's keep things small. Uh, so save underscore map. And 
We're going to be using accesses for this just because it's slightly more concise. So you can actually kind of treat them like arrays, but actually um, you can you can treat sorry data structures such as lists and uh, maps and so on as arrays by introducing accessors or little characters that you add inside the square brackets in order to uh, tell what kind of data structure it is. For instance, with maps, you can put a question mark followed by your key. Now our key will be our circle object, which is named O circle. And like so, you have accessed the uh, O circle uh, entry in global of save map. So what the value is going to be set to is an array. And uh, the array will contain a number of strings. And each of the string will be the name of a variable we want to save. So we want to save the x variable. We want to save the y variable. And we also want to save the color index variable, which is the custom uh, variable we defined in the create event. So here we have our x, y, and color index for our O circle. And as you can see, we have them as strings. Now, what is left to do now is to um, actually start using that data when we want to save our object. So we're going to create a new script quickly. And this one is going to be called uh, instance get save map and what this will do let's quickly write a description for it returns the or a map um, representing an instance so essentially it will be a map filled with uh, the variables we defined in our previous save meta script it will take a single argument which is our instance. So var instance is equal to argument zero. Now, now that we have an instance, we need to know what variables we want to save. And so in order to do that, we need to find uh, what object it is, because we want to be able to reference our save map over here. So what we write is var object is equal to instance dot object index. So object index holds the, the current object type of the instance. So now that we have the object, we can actually get the variable array. So we can write var array is equal to uh, global dot save map or save save map is it? Yes. And again, we're going to be using accesses. So question mark and then uh, we want the actual objects that we just got. So now that we have a uh, list of variable names that we want to uh, that we want to save, we just need some place to save them to. And uh, as the description describes, we actually want to save them to a map. So we're going to say var map is equal to ds underscore map underscore create and this will create a new map for us that we can populate with all the data we want. So first of all, before we start putting all the variables, we need to actually put the object index in that map so that when we load the data again, we're able to tell what kind of object it was. And so for that, we're just going to write map question mark and then object underscore index. And that will be equal to our object we just determined. Now we can start looping through our var array using a simple for loop. var i equals zero. i is smaller than array length underscore one dimensional. Our variable is var array and increment i. So we can get the actual names of the variable var name is equal to, uh, let's see, var array at position i. And then we can get the value stored within that array. So you can write var value is equal to, and here is the interesting uh, reflective part of GameMaker. Uh, that's actually new to GameMaker Studio 2, though it was previously, there was something similar in GameMaker Studio 8.1 if you've ever used that. Uh, so uh, the actual code is variable underscore and what we want is instance 
get. So instance get gets first of all the instance we want to get the variable from. And next the name of the variable we want to get. So now we have a name and value we can actually add it to the map. So we can say map at the, va at the name with remember using a question mark here is equal to our value. So now we have our map and we're ready to return it because it has all the information we need. So we can write a very simple return map. And with this simple script, we're now able to get all the relevant data that we defined in save meta for our instances. So we're going to save it. And now the last uh, step in saving this uh, into a nice JSON format is to actually get the data from all of our uh, objects. So we're going to uh, quickly have a new script, name it, uh, let's see, save instances. Or yeah, that's a good enough name for now. And as a description, will be returns a JSON string of all instances. So what we're going to do is first of all uh, create a list. So this list will hold all of the maps that we cre that we are going to create with the script we just created previously. And from that list, we'll be able to get our JSON. So we want to loop through all of the objects which are inside our uh, save meta map over here. So what we're going to write is actually there's a pretty simple thing we can do is say with all. And then we want to check if it's actually inside this map over here. So we can say with all if ds map underscore exists the map is global dot save map and the key will be um, object underscore index so if this object is inside the map so if it actually has data to be saved then we can add to the list we can add the map to the list so we can say var map is equal to instance get save map. The instance will be the current instance being executed and because we're inside a with uh, statement and a with block we can just use id and then we can add that map to our list. So we can write ds underscore list underscore add. Our list is list and the value is map. Now GameMaker treats the data structure and uh, references as numbers. So when you create a new map, it returns a number. And such right now, uh, there is no way for GameMaker to know that what we added to the list was actually a map. And so we need to tell it that it's actually a map so that when it creates the JSON, it's able to not just put the number there, but actually put all the data that's in the map. And so to do this, there is a nice function called DS list mark as list uh never sorry mark as map what we want to do is mark it as a map and so the id of the map of oh, sorry of the list is the previously created list and the position will be the last item we added which is the last index so we do ds list size list and then minus one for the last item so outside the with loop, we now have all of our objects, all of our relevant objects inside our list, and we can now create a JSON. However, GameMaker requires you to give it a map in order to create the JSON string. It will not work with a simple list. And so what we need to do is wrap the whole thing in uh, other maps. So we can write var m equals ds underscore map underscore create. And then this map can have a single uh, value, which will be instances. And we're going to set that to our list. Now, again, same problem. We need to mark it as, um, as a map, sorry, as a list. We need to mark the list inside our map as a list. So we write ds underscore map underscore mark Oh no, never mind, sorry. But maps work differently from instances, and that's quite interesting because with a list, you have to first add it 
and then mark as a map. Maps work differently in that you have to di directly add it as a list. Now, why is there such a difference? It's not quite clear. Um, it's probably just uh, an oversight when they developed it. Uh, one thing to note is that in the future of GameMaker, this will no longer be uh, necessary, as they have mentioned and uh, pretty much confirmed that they were going to add true data types for lists and maps and so on. So doing this uh, step of marking as a map or adding as a list will no longer be necessary. So you can write ds map add list directly in a single line with our map, our key being instances, and our value being our list. Now we can generate the JSON from this and uh, luckily we have a very simple uh, a very simple method called JSON encode, which simply takes our map. And this will return a nice JSON string. So let's store this inside a variable. Now that we actually have a string that represents all our data, we no longer need all the maps and lists and so on that we created. So we can free them. So normally you would have to iterate through each of your maps and each of your lists in order to destroy the data that's in them. However, because we marked them as a map and as lists, GameMaker will automatically loop through all of them and delete everything we marked as a map, etc. Which makes our job a lot easier because all we have to call is ts map underscore destroy and the map will be m, our map. All that's left to do is return our JSON string and we're ready to actually use this inside our save object. So let's go to our save load tab and quickly find our save object. And what we're gonna do is add an event. We're gonna use a gesture tap. So if you are not aware, uh, in GameMaker Studio 2 now have these really neat functions, uh, the tap and drag and so on, uh, events I should say. And so the tap event is a single uh, press down and release but quite quickly. It doesn't work with uh, if you keep it pressed down for a long time It will actually register it as a drag now I quite like using these tap events because it actually does the full press down and release uh, action which uh, is really quite uh, Nice because it means you can if, if you didn't want to press the button You can keep pressing and or drag the mouse off the button and so on it's quite nice. Now it's not quite perfect because it does mean that a very long press you may want to have registered uh, but it won't in this case. However for our, for our needs it'll be just fine. So here we're gonna have save data as a description and what we want to do is basically get or is basically get our JSON string and uh, what we can do is write var let me actually put this over here var JSON is equal to and the name of our script was save instances. Instances with an S. I don't know why. That is very interesting. Our script is very clearly named save inst. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Never mind, let's spell that correctly. Instances. Here we go. Make sure you spell your scripts correctly when naming them. So save instances will uh, return our JSON and now we can save it to a file. So what we will do is very quickly write file uh, var file name or actually just file is equal to file underscore text open write and the file name we're just going to do save dot JSON for now. Then we're going to write var uh, actually, we don't need the variable anymore. We just need to write f file underscore write file text write string. Our file will be file, and our string will be JSON. So now that we've written all of our text to a string we, uh, to our file, we can actually close the file using file text close file, and we are done saving. Now, uh, what we can do is quickly save this. And, uh, well, if we run it, we should be able to see that clicking on it will save the file. However, there will not be a way to actually see that file or anything like so. So what we can do is write, uh, we can write, uh, 
uh, URL underscore open, and we're just gonna give it save dot JSON. Now, what this will do is open the file in your default browser such that you can actually see the contents. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want that in a game, but it's a nice way to debug the information in order to see what the file looks like. So let's uh, run it again. And I can now press save, and my browser should open, and we can see the whole file. So I have a single map over here uh, with our instances, and then we have a long list with uh, a bunch of different maps in them. And as you can see, we have object index zero, which is our circle. I should probably make this bigger if I can. There we go. Object index uh, zero, which is our circle. Then we have our color index, which is zero as it should be. Then we have the X and Y variables. Then we have another object over here, or instance, I should say, and the third instance. So it's all working just fine. We can close this. And uh, I mean, you could, we could change the colors of each of our objects like so. And if we press save again, we'll be able to see that now each of the color indices are set to another value. So we can see that it is getting the names of our, the, the values of our variables correctly. So now we can close this, close that, we can actually get working on the loading mechanism. So for now, I'm gonna comment out this line URL open because we won't really be needing this and we can open up our loading object. So we can add an event. Again, we're gonna be using the tap events and I'm going to rename this load data. So the first step we want to do when loading our data, let me just make this a bit bigger here, is get uh, all the file, the, the, all the string, sorry, get all the text in our file. So we can write, first of all, var file is equal to file underscore text underscore open read. We only need to read the file. The name is uh, save.json, I believe. Let me just check above. Yes, save.json. Let's make this a bit smaller so I can see the uh, tooltip below. Here we go. Then we can actually uh, read all the data. So before we open the file, we can write var json is equal to empty string. And then we can loop through the string until, uh, sorry, the file until there is no more text. So we can write while file underscore text underscore and of file file. And this will return true when we're at the end of the file. So we want to negate it so that it will in the end return false when we reach the end of the file breaking the loop. Then we can write file, uh, never mind, JSON plus is equal to file underscore text underscore read string. Uh, read and then, sorry, we want to read the whole line and we're going to write file in here. Now, after the while loop, we ha should have finished reading the whole file so we can close it using file underscore text close file and we now have a JSON to load. However, we still don't have the scripts to do that. So we're going to go back to our code over here and create a new script. This one will be named, uh, let's see, map underscore get instance or actually more accurately save map get instance so this will get our instance from a save map so the description is uh, create an instance from the save map what we want to do is actually first of all accept a parameter which will be a map I can spell param correctly. And we can write var map equals argument zero. Now the first thing we need to know is what kind of object it was. Thankfully that's pretty simple. We can just write um, var object is equal to map and the key is object underscore index. Now what we can do next is actually create the instance. So we can write instance underscore uh, instance equals. Actually, we should probably make this a temporary variable. 
var instance equals instance underscore create oops create layer x y uh, not actually let's well, put that at zero zero it doesn't matter since we're going to be loading the data afterwards layer let's put it on the same layer as the current object and then our object now for this tutorial we're not going to be caring about layers however if you are using layers in your game it's quite important that you actually get this right so when saving your instance over here uh over here you may not only want to put the object index but you may also want to include the layer that you're saving to uh, in fact i may do that now map and then we can add the layer like so equals uh, instance dot la layer this will ensure that we're always uh, recreating the object on the same layer such that if i go over here we can now actually have var um, underscore layer remember don't use built-in variables even for temporary variables map and then we can reuse the same layer index over here and over here we can replace this with underscore layer so that we ensure we always create it on the right layer when creating your instance now this is still not quite foolproof as you may want to actually use the depth variable when dealing with your object at which point uh, you'll actually have to keep track of which objects are on layers and which objects are using depths so that you can recreate the layers appropriately. However, for the scope of this tutorial, we're just going to assume you're only using layers for now. So now that we have our instance, it's time to actually load all the information from our map so we can uh, quickly loop through all the, um, all the save load data we have inside our uh, inside our meta so what we can do is go inside our save meta gml no never mind our instance get save gml and what we want to get is copy this var array line over here um, you could retype it it's quite short uh, but all we're doing is we're getting that save map again and then we're going to loop through all of the values which are inside it so we can say for var i equals zero, i is smaller than array underscore length underscore one dimensional var array. And then we can increment i. We can say var name is equal to var underscore array at i. And then our value is equal to and this time we're getting it from the map so we have to say map question mark name so now that we have the name and value we actually have a very nice uh, ver uh, again very nice variable function here called variable instance set and this will take our instance which is the previously created instance it will take the name of the variable and the value of the variable. Here we go. So uh, all that's left to do is um, return that object just uh, in case. So return instance. Now we don't, for this particular piece of code, we won't really be needing that return. However, you may want to uh, fiddle around with the um, save system and at which point having actually this return value may be useful. It certainly doesn't hurt. So what we can do finally is add a new script called load instances and it will, as a description, it will um, destroy all savable instances and I'll load new ones from JSON. Now, the reason we want to destroy all the instances is that we don't want the old one to stay around. Uh, when you load a game, you want your player to seem like it's changing position. You don't want it to look like um, you don't want it to look like there's certainly a new player on top of it. You want uh, only one player at a time. 
same goes with all the other uh, all the other uh, objects in your game. So it will actually take a single parameter, which will be our JSON string. So first of all, we want to get our JSON. And second of all, we want to delete all of our instances. And we're going to be doing that uh, again by uh, looping through all of the um, objects we have. So with all. And then once again, we want to check whether it's part of the map. In fact, we could copy this from save instances over here. Paste it back in here. And we can delete that middle section over here and replace it with instance underscore destroy. So now that we have destroyed all the savable and thus loadable objects, we can actually create them back from our map. So first of all, we want to get, uh, we want to decode our JSON. And again, that's pretty simple. We're going to write var m is equal to JSON underscore decode. And the string will be JSON. And then we want to get our list. So var list is equal to m question mark instances. Then we want to loop through all of the objects or all the maps stored inside that list. So we're going to write for var i equals zero and i is smaller than ds list size list and increment i. We can now actually get the map from our list by writing var map is equal to list and then we can again use accessors however rather than a question mark we're going to use a pipe symbol which is usually the key above the enter key if you press shift you'll get that pipe uh, if you are on a US keyboard I think a British keyboard will be somewhere on the bottom left near the alt key uh, it will obviously depend on your keyboard however it is the very straight vertical line and we're getting it from our list so now, uh, sorry, at position i, let's do this correctly. So now that we have our map, we can actually get uh, our instance from it. So we can write save map get instance map. So now that we have created all our objects again, we can delete all of uh, the data. And again, because GameMaker is aware of what is a map and what is a list because it just loaded it from JSON, we can simply call ds map destroy m, which is our outermost map. So we can save everything and go to our load object. So we have our JSON string filled with all the data we want. All we have to do now is call load instances. And our JSON is JSON over here. So we can press save and run. And what we should see is that we can first of all move a couple objects around, change their color, press save, and now we can move them around some more, change their color some more, and when we press load, they're back to the way we had them before. So let's actually see that again by putting them in yet another configuration, press save, moving them out of their configuration, press load, and they're back to how it was. However, you will notice that if I actually type something in here, for example, this simple string, and then press save, follow it by changing it to something else, and then load it, it is not actually loading that object. You can see that the rest gets loaded, but not these objects. So what we're going to do is get to working on that. Fortunately, it is pretty simple thanks to our saved metascripts over here. All we have to do is write global.savemap question mark o square and it's going to be equal to and there's only really one variable we want to uh, store which is the string that the, the object has and that's just str. That's all I called it. Um, we can actually go and check on it. As you can see, it's just str, 
So we can save that and run. And just by adding that one line, we added an entire object to our save system. As you can see, I can still move these around and change their color, but I can also change this over here. For example, I can change it to Hello World. I'll save it. I'll now move them back out. You'll see that they'll still move. And I'll change the string to something else like um, GM Wolf. And if I now uh, load it, you can see that they get created in, in the wrong place because um, we're deleting them. But you can see the tall text Hello World over here. Now, you may have noticed that um, we only wanted to keep the string information because that's the only thing that was going to change. However, we just realized that we also need to remember the X and Y position. So what we can do is go inside our save meta and add the X and Y variable. And just like that, it will now also save the X and Y variable. And I hope you can see how powerful this system is uh, just by being able to change that map. So again, I can change this to hello world. I will save it. And I can now change it to um, no longer hello world, for instance. But however, if I press load, it will change it back to hello world and it will keep the X and Y position. Now the number of variables you could save there are, you know, pretty big. I, I believe it's uh, t to of 32 minus 1 is what you'll be able to fit in there. Or t to the power of 31 minus 1 because of the size of the arrays that you can have in Game Maker Studio. Uh, so yeah, th this is a really quite a, a powerful system that I hope you can um, use in your games and uh, actually there's one more thing to mention is that right now we can only store uh, integers uh, arrays and um, strings uh, perhaps colors and uh, pointers may work however uh, we are not covering uh, if your object is holding a list or if it's holding a map and unfortunately there isn't as of yet a way to tell game maker that this variable is a map or a list now in uh the future we yo, -Yo games haven't quite told us yet but as i mentioned before uh these types should become their own type so it will work perfectly fine with this system however if uh this is not uh if you really need this to work what you can do is have as a first um, as a first character here. For instance, if you ha wanted to save a list over here inside our square, what you could do is add the first character, for instance, a pipe uh, or the vertical line to to say a list, followed by the name of the list, and then inside your save uh, save script in here, you could check whether the name has uh, a pipe as the first character, and if it does, you want to add the list as a list to the map. And then when you load instances over here, you can check again whether the first character inside your name is a pipe, and if it is, load a string. You could obviously use any character you like and for any kind of data structure you want. So if you want to add maps, you can add a question mark or really anything. However, keeping it the same as the access is pretty nice. And if you are working with grids, you'll have to find a way to convert your grid into a list of lists for it to work. However, it's still pretty much the same idea. You can just check the first character, and if it is different, you can use the correct saving um, method. So this is it for this uh, more advanced saving system. It's actually a system that I use whenever I want to make a save system because it means just simply because of the scalability and the reusability. The code can really be used in any project and it will pretty much work flawlessly. So I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please give it a like. And if you would like to see more of these videos, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.